But the Bible tells us that, that as this people went on, they began to be blessed by God. But as they began to be blessed by God, they also began to grow fat and happy. And the more they were blessed, the less time they had for God. The more that God blessed them, the more uh, they began to turn away from God and, and they began to, 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 to not seek him as they once did before. You know, that happens to some of us, doesn't it? It's funny that when, uh, when, we're, when we're fat and happy, we kind of lay in bed and say, oh, God, thank you for the day. Amen. I'm tired. I got to get up tomorrow. But when we're skinny and hungry, we're on our face before God. Oh, God, help me. I need you, Lord. Hello, has anybody ever been there? Hmm? It is a dangerous thing when we become content, when we become self-sufficient, when we no longer rely upon the God that we so eagerly used to serve. And this is what happened to Israel. They walked away from him. And as a result of that, it wasn't God who judged them. The way they lived caused God to have to move back away from their lives. I hear sometimes, I don't know why the Lord is doing this to me. He's not. Maybe you need to go back to that place where you once knew his blessing, where you once knew his presence. And be honest and open between you and your God and ask him, Father, where did I take the wrong road? Now, I'm not saying if you're going through something, necessarily it's because you've sinned or you've walked away from God. But a good 80 to 90% of the time, it's our fault and it's never God's fault. Hello? It's getting quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Must have hit a nerve there. Oh, Lord. But Israel walked away from God. God would send them prophets warning them that if they didn't turn back to him, the result would be that they would be invaded and conquered by other nations. You can, I don't know why the Holy Spirit's taking me, but this must be for somebody. You can go back to that place. Before you found yourself in the place where you are sitting here tonight. If you will be honest by the Spirit of God, you can go back to the place that God sent someone by your way and said, Hey, would you like to go to prayer meeting? And you said, No, I just don't know. Or maybe, I'll tell you, let's get real here tonight. I remember one time, I was running from God. And I walked away from God. Man, God's talking to somebody. I was running from God. I knew God. I knew his presence. But, but there was something in my life. I still hadn't been delivered from many, many things in my heart. Things that I didn't even know were still there. Things that I had thought I had the victory over. But whenever testing or trial or, or something bumped up against me uh, that was just too much for me to handle, I didn't have the strength spiritually in me to run to the Lord. I would run back to those things that used to bring me comfort when I was in the world. Hello? It wasn't something that I wanted to do. I just didn't have enough uh, surrender in my heart, I guess is what you would say yet. You see, if we could be honest in church, this walk with God is a process. I mean, I love, thank God for the testimonies where the brothers or sisters get up and say, you know, I was just horrible and so forth and so on. And one day Jesus broke into my life and I've, I've been great ever since. I mean, you know, I say praise God, but it didn't work that way for me. And we're afraid to talk about it in church. You know, some of the... <laughs> Some of the biggest gathering of liars is on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Hello? Can't pay your bills. Wife left you. Uh, you've been fooling around with the secretary. Your dog bit you on the way out the door. 
and you come to church and they say, how you doing, brother? And you say, oh, everything's blessed, brother. I'm just doing fine. Liar! <laughs> oh, Lord. And so we go through a process. This walk with God, it ain't easy. I mean, especially in the world we're living in now. It's not easy. It's not easy. I wish I could give you three points and a tape collection you could take home, <laughs> study my manual, you know, buy my DVD, and you just, you know, it'll be okay tomorrow. But that, is, that isn't the truth. <sighs> Hello. You know, Peter said on the night that Jesus would be arrested in the garden, Peter was sitting at the dinner table, and he told Jesus, said, man, I'm going to be betrayed tonight. And Peter said, Lord, I don't care if everybody else betrays you. I'll, I'll never betray you. He said, I am ready both to go to jail and to die with you, Lord. I asked myself one time, I said, Lord, many more than one time, I said, Lord, how could a man say, I am ready and be absolutely, completely convinced in his own heart that he was ready and yet only be a few moments from the greatest failure that he had ever experienced in his life. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the Spirit of God uh, and his mercy on Peter's life, he would have hung himself just like Judas did. I am ready. That, that just blows my mind. We're talking about church people here now. Hmm? Think of what the power of God would be like in our services if we could just take off all our religious pretense and walk in the door and say, you know what? I ain't perfect, but I know one who is, and his name is Jesus, and he can save me, he can heal me, he can set me free. I'm hanging on, and I hope you are too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 